Hi, I'm Amber Bissinger, External Relations Specialist for Iowa State University Extension. Today I'm in Burlington, one of many Iowa communities devastated by the 2008 floods. Today we're going to learn about Extension's role in the recovery and rebuilding process. Well, I work through a grant that I am the case advocate for residents of Des Moines County that were impacted by the flood. My role is to be their voice, to be the person that, you know, if grants come up that could help them with anything that they didn't get money from FEMA or SBA or insurance. A lot of our clients did not have flood insurance because they weren't in a floodplain. So, after the cost of the repairs of the homes, and most of these clients lost everything. We are there to make sure that nobody falls through the cracks. I can give you an example of one of our clients without giving away any names. Um, I had an elderly couple, both retired, and because of the situation with the levees and, and, the, and the way um, the river, the Mississippi River levee broke or whatever, their house was underwater for, like, I don't know, a couple months, whatever. They lost everything. Because they weren't in a floodplain, they didn't have insurance. They did get FEMA help. They did get Jumpstart help, which is a local uh, grant that helped them to build their house. But they didn't know which way to turn. They didn't know whether to rebuild on the spot. I mean, this was their homestead. And you can imagine at age 70 to start all over. And when I first met her, the very first day that couple came in, she looked me in the eye and she said, we didn't know what to do. At 70, who starts over? And I saw her go from like despair to saying I can't sleep at night to possibly I think a little bit was she now had somebody she could talk to that could listen to her and could help direct them in ways like okay apply for this grant apply for that grant much of which they had done but they had gotten frustrated or overwhelmed they are now in the process of rebuilding um, and hope to be back in their home by November. They're in a FEMA trailer right now and to watch her, the last thing she said to me when I spoke to her I think last week was I can sleep at night now. To know that our county, the groups we work with had something to do with that is just a feeling you can't, you can't explain, you can't put it on paper but that's what these people needed. They needed somebody that could be their voice and that's what, through extension, that's what we've done. We have right now probably been notified of over 300 homes of families that were impacted in Des Moines County. Some of those families had losses. Some of them had like insurance and things like that that they, they recovered all of their losses as far as you can recover from a flood. Um, I am working probably with between 150 to 170 families that have what's called verified loss as far as FEMA is concerned. And those are the ones we're gearing to first. We will eventually contact the other 200 um, and see so that nobody fell through the cracks because it's as easy as a typo on a, on a piece of paper whereas we think they had no loss and they might have. But FEMA has it registered right at a little over 300, something like that.
In here in Des Moines County, we have the Des Moines County Disaster Recovery Organization. And through them, where I'm involved, one of my grants is to help the, each household that was affected possibly get a grant of $2,500. The people involved in that organization range from local churches, um, United Way, Emergency Management, Community Action, Red Cross, Southeast Regional Planning Commission, um, Salvation Army, Rescare, DHS, and of course Extension. The ability to work with these people and to see how they care and the hard work that they put into this to keep this coalition going, to be there, hopefully never to have another disaster, but if one does happen, I think we have a head start um, because of how well they work together and their willingness to put that time in. Through my work as case advocate, I have to say the most humbling experience has been number one meeting some awfully nice Des Moines County residents. But when they come in, when a client comes in and I start talking to them, I have been amazed at the number of them that said, well, yeah, you know, I had a loss, but you need to talk to Susie down the street or you need to talk to Mr. and Mrs. So-and-so. They're always worried about that somebody was worse off than them. And if you don't think that's humbling, to know, because I know what these people have lost, I have the figures in front of me, yet they're worried about their neighbor. I think if anything explains Des Moines County and the residents that I'm working with, that would be my thought process is these people, even in their time of devastation, many of them, their thought is for who can they help down the street, who's a neighbor that needs help more than them.